So well, is this latest move by the Trump administration an olive branch that could actually help us get closer to a trade agreement? And what signal is more economic stimulus out of China giving our trade negotiators? For that, I'd like to bring in former Commerce Deputy Director Chris Garcia. Chris, thanks for being in studio. Great Good to see you. be back, yeah. Hey, uh, okay, so uh, Huawei gets a lifeline. Uh, China's going to cut their rates tonight. We know they're kind of been on a, a tremendous amount of trouble, and the market seems very relieved. But where do we go from here? Right. So I think the first thing we need to look at is less of a lifeline to China. This is more of a lifeline to U.S. companies to get them to shift out of China. As I've said before, we know that China's going to try to run the clock out on President Trump's presidency. We have to also be there in the long run as well. What that means is, number one, we've got to get the Fed to cooperate on rates. Number two, USMCA has to be passed. And thirdly, let's take a look at this shift maybe to Latin America. We just saw Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross come back from that, that triangle of countries, offering even to support Venezuela. So I think shifting away from China is the long run. That's what we've got to do as a country. It'd, even, it'd be even better right. if we got it back in the United States. But to your point, long run does not happen in 90 days, right? So uh, and in, in addition to that, we, you know, this started out in part as China opening their markets to fair trade with America. So a lot of businesses need to be there to be close to the Chinese consumer. So essentially, you know, we don't want to wreck that. And I think uh, to a degree, that's what Tim Cook may be talking about. Yeah, I think that's what uh, the president is looking at very, very closely. We, we know that when Secretary Ross talks with uh, these business leaders about these tariffs that started under his administration, under the, the very early days of the Trump administration, it threw it the whole business community for a loop. But they realize now, after these discussions, that these are national security secrets. These are national security threats that we're facing with Huawei. We saw that with ZTE. I think that some of the concessions that we offer ZTE could also come uh, later with Huawei. But there have to be assurances that they're not putting in type, any types of backdoors, uh, any types of side door software uh, that's going to try right. to maliciously attack the American people. That's the big deal. That's yeah, the national security. We learned uh, last week that Huawei is helping uh, essentially African dictators spy on their own people. So, you know, they don't have a great track record as being a great global citizen, if you will. Uh, you know, there have been bugs found, found in some of their equipment around the world. Uh, now, they've, they're doing a, a pretty good job, in my mind, sending out emissaries on TV in America and other places. Plus, a lot of American businesses seem willing to, to give up some of these secrets for access to that market. Well, I think that in the long run, that's going to be very detrimental to the U.S. as a whole. You know, let's take a look at what's going on in Hong Kong now. It's supposed to be the, the one nation, two, two systems, right? I think that if we take a look at who's going to be at the top, who's going to be the king of the hill, I would rather have the United States governing the world's economy, not China. With Tim Cook making the, uh, the argument, and I think it's not just for Apple, although obviously Apple's got a pretty good argument. A week ago they talked about the fact that they, uh, their fingerprints are on 2.4 million jobs in this country. Suppliers alone, $60 billion in, in business last year, supporting 450,000 jobs. But I think Tim Cook is sort of also arguing, hey, you know what, all of these September 1st tariffs, let's find a way to push them a little bit further. I, I personally believe that will happen. Uh, and I think maybe President Trump can latch on to the, the Cook argument for making it happen. But what do we need to see from China? Because they haven't made any real concessions lately. Well, you know, Secretary Mnuchin uh, put it very astutely. He said that in May we were about 90 percent of the way there with U.S. Trade Rep uh, Bob Lighthizer leading the way as well. They backed off. Beijing backed off. Right. So and we understand that they concessions. don't want to completely change their total, you know, you know, we're asking them to make some major changes in the way they run their country. We know maybe this deal ultimately happens in bite sizes, but what's the next small morsel that they buy, you know, $500 million worth of soybeans? What's something that we can really say, okay, they really want to negotiate and we're really heading down a path that ultimately gives us the final solution, uh, something that really works for everyone? Yeah, I think that the soybean purchases, I think the large tranche of agricultural purchases was what they promised initially. Also, stopping the sale of fentanyl to the United States, that's a very, very simple thing to do for the Chinese to, uh, to allow the, the United States to just compete openly and fairly is in the long run something we have to make sure we get done. But these small little moves, I think, inching toward a deal, uh, I, again, I don't think we're going to see one before the election. I think they're going to try to run the clock out as sure. long as they can. But small moves like that, I think, will allow the administration to continue to negotiate in good faith. Chris, great seeing you. Thank you very much. It's good to see you, Appreciate Charles. it.